August 18th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Job chapters 36 and 37 from the Old Testament. Elihu said further, Be patient with me a little longer, and I will instruct you, for I still have words to speak on God's behalf. With my knowledge I will speak comprehensively, and to my Creator I will ascribe righteousness. For in truth my words are not false. It is one complete in knowledge who is with you. Indeed, God is mighty, and he does not despise people. He is mighty and firm in his intent. He does not allow the wicked to live, but he gives justice to the poor. He does not take his eyes off the righteous, but with kings on the throne, he seats the righteous and exalts them forever. But if they are bound in chains and held captive by the cords of affliction, then he reveals to them what they have done and their transgressions that they were behaving proudly. And he reveals this for correction and says that they must turn from evil. If they obey and serve him, they live out their days in prosperity and their years in pleasantness. But if they refuse to listen, they pass over the river of death and expire without knowledge. The godless at heart nourish anger. They do not cry out even when he binds them. They die in their youth and their life ends among the male cultic prostitutes. He delivers the afflicted by their afflictions. He reveals himself to them by their suffering. And surely he drew you from the mouth of distress to a wide place unrestricted and to the comfort of your table filled with rich food. But now you are preoccupied with the judgment due the wicked. Judgment and justice take hold of you. Be careful that no one entices you with riches, do not let a large bribe turn you aside. Would your wealth sustain you so that you would not be in distress, even all your mighty efforts? Do not long for the cover of night to drag people away from their homes. Take heed. Do not turn to evil, for because of this you have been tested by affliction. Indeed, God is exalted in his power. Who is a teacher like him? Who has prescribed his ways for him? Or said to him, you have done what is wicked? Remember to extol his work, which people have praised in song. All humanity has seen it. People gaze on it from afar. Yes, God is great beyond our knowledge. The number of his years is unsearchable. He draws up drops of water. They distill the rain into its midst, which the clouds pour down and shower on humankind abundantly. Who can understand the spreading of the clouds, the thunderings of his pavilion, See how he scattered his lightning about him. He has covered the depths of the sea. It is by these that he judges the nations and supplies food in abundance. With his hands he covers the lightning and directs it against its target. His thunder announces the coming storm, the cattle also concerning the storm's approach. At this also my heart pounds and leaps from its place. Listen carefully to the thunder of his voice. To the rumbling that proceeds from his mouth, under the whole heaven he lets it go, even his lightning to the far corners of the earth. After that a voice roars. He thunders with an exalted voice, and he does not hold back his lightning bolts when his voice is heard. God thunders with his voice in marvelous ways. He does great things beyond our understanding. For to the snow, he says, fall to the earth, and to the torrential rains, pour down. He causes everyone to stop working so that all people may know his work. The wild animals go to their lairs, and in their dens they remain. A tempest blows out from its chamber, icy cold from the driving winds. The breath of God produces ice, and the breath of the waters freeze solid. He loads the clouds with moisture. He scatters his lightning through the clouds. The clouds go round in circles, wheeling about according to his plans to carry out all he commands them over the face of the whole inhabited world. Whether it is for punishment for his land or whether it is for mercy, he causes it to find its mark. Pay attention to this, Job. Stand still and consider the wonders God works. Do you know how God commands them? How he makes lightning flash in his storm cloud? Do you know about the balancing of the clouds, that wondrous activity of him who is perfect in knowledge? You, whose garments are hot when the earth is still because of the south wind. Will you, with him, spread out the clouds, solid as a mirror of molten metal? Tell us what we should say to him. 
We cannot prepare a case because of the darkness. Should he be informed that I want to speak? If a man speaks, surely he would be swallowed up. But now the sun cannot be looked at. It is bright in the skies after wind passed and swept the clouds away. From the north he comes in golden splendor. Around God is awesome majesty. As for the Almighty, we cannot attain to him. He is great in power, but justice and abundant righteousness he does not oppress. Therefore, people fear him, for he does not regard all the wise in heart. God, it's, it's a little bit hard to watch Elihu's arrogance, mostly because it replicates a lot of the arrogance I see in my own life. Um, but the very last statement he me he says before we know that you're about to come into the into the conversation, he says, "Therefore, people fear him, for he does not regard all the wise in heart." <laughs> Elihu has just spent all this time saying he he is knowledgeable of all these things that he speaks on your behalf, and now he's saying that those who are uh, conceited that you will disregard. Uh, because people should fear him. And there's no fear in Elihu at all. <laughs> None. There's just sheer arrogance. God, today I just pray for wisdom. Uh, I get so excited about learning your word and learning more about how that works in our relationship and even more about the history of when the Bible was written and how it applies to us today. I love watching your word change people's lives. There's just so much about that. And God, I know that there's people out there who, who struggle to even read the Bible on a daily basis. And I understand that because I was there at one point. Um, and the only thing that at that time people were like, how, how did you get to the point you're at now? The only thing that I can tell them is to just keep reading. Because eventually that passion that you have in a relationship where you're falling in love with somebody starts to happen through your word, God. And I learned more and more that I actually don't know a whole lot about anything. The more I learn about your word, uh, the deeper our relationship goes, but the less I actually am sure of, um, with the exception of the exact words that you're saying in the Bible, um, which I think is good. It means I'm relying less on my own understanding, like Elihu is relying on his understanding, and I'm relying more and more on your word. And I also know that because of it, my my view of who you were and who your word was and religion things used to be very very wide very very broad and i know as i learn more about your word it becomes tighter and tighter and tighter and i i really struggle with people who want to um, make conclusions or draw connections to things or connect the dots to things that are more about what they think sort of like elihu is drawing big sweeping connections as well as job's other three friends uh, big sweeping connections that actually are wrong. Uh, it even talks about in chapter 36 verse 11, it says if they obey and serve him, they live out their days in prosperity and their years in pleasantness. Well, that's part of that whole prosperity doctrine, which is taking your word God and making it a all about us spin on it. That prosperity doctrine is all about us. It's not about you. And Elihu's doing the same thing here and it gets really frustrating and, and I work really hard at trying to help myself understand your wisdom and, and what your what the truth of your word is. And I try and share it with other people as well. But I do know a lot of people are just like I was. A lot of people are like Elihu where um, there's just this arrogance that what I know or what I've been taught in my church or what my pastor says it is what is right and you know I was having a conversation last night with a friend of mine and um, they said something and I said yeah but that's not biblical that's a version that people have come out with the bible that makes them feel good but that's not biblical everything out there has to be measured against your word God Everything we do, everything we think, everything we teach, everything we read, everything we record has to be measured against you. It has to go back to your word. You will never contradict what is in your Bible, your word to us. You will never contradict it. So if we're seeing something that goes against that, which obviously it's really easy to see with Elihu and his friends that they're missing the whole point. If we're seeing something that's going against that, it's obviously us who is wrong 
you're not wrong, your word's not wrong. It's obviously us who, who've gotten something wrong in that process. So God, today I pray for wisdom. I pray for wisdom that people will intentionally read their Bible, even if it's for five or ten minutes every day, and just start hearing those words, those words of truth, pure truth, speak into their hearts. That eventually those words would grow and grow and their desire for wisdom would just overwhelm them and excite them. And it would cause this amazing relationship between them and you uh, to happen. God, help us to know what the truth is and help us to always speak truth to others and be really careful and cautious with throwing around flippantly the word of God that we would be honor, honoring and respectful of what you have given us in the Bible. Thank you, God. Thank you so much for all this amazing wisdom and guidance for our life. Thank you for this incredible love letter that I call my love letters, which is the Bible. In your son's name I pray, amen.